Okay, hello. My name is Neil Stokes. I am a librarian with the Los Angeles Public Library's digital content team. And I am hoping very much that we are live and that there's going to be audio and video. And it looks like that's the case. I'm just going to check in on our streams here and see. Can you hear us? Well, not hearing yet, but oh, there we go. Okay, it's coming through. So welcome, everyone. This is Ask a Librarian Live. This is a weekly streaming program from the Los Angeles Public Library. My name is Neil Stokes, as I said. And today, we are going to be talking about a very cool project, uh, collaboration from several departments in the library to try and document this kind of um, unique experience that we're all going through together in Los Angeles. Uh, and I am going to be joined by two guests, Sung Kim, a librarian with the uh, digitization and special collections department and Kelly Wallace, who we had on here recently on our uh, sort of online historical research program. Kelly Wallace is from the history and genealogy department. Um, so let me bring them in and we'll say hello. Hi guys, how's it going? Hello, great. Nice to see you both. Um, I wanted to just start off, maybe we can kind of talk a little bit about, um, obviously all of our branches and our central library are closed right now, uh, but librarians are all still working. We're all working from home. Uh, most of us are working from home. And I just wanted to ask you guys a little bit about what it's been like, what you've been doing. Um, maybe Kelly, can you tell us a little bit about kind of, well, maybe tell us, you know, what you normally did really quickly and then what, how that's changed and what you've been up to um, since you've been working from home. Well, one of my major uh, tasks as a California subject specialist in the history department is indexing. I index newspapers, magazines, and journals for uh, citations and for clippings for the vertical files for our California index. And so I've been trying to keep up with that at home. I have, this is a pile of what I've indexed oh, wow. so far from over here. This is my pile still to be indexed. And I have to thank Matthew Matson. He created a workaround uh, so that I could continue uh, making entries from home. So that much hasn't changed. And I've still been answering some research questions. Uh, we've still been getting some research questions and try to answer them the best as I can. It's not that easy from home. And uh, so, you know, struggling to try to stay focused, but I'm doing a lot of the same things that I, you know, would do normally in the department. And I know one thing you did participate in recently was you, you worked as a disaster service worker, um, which is, if you didn't know, if you're watching, that's a program where all city workers or a large number of city workers are actually, um, basically, we sign a contract that we will act as disaster service workers uh, in the case of an emergency. Uh, citywide emergency. So, uh, Kelly, can you tell us a little bit about what you did? Yes, uh, Monday and Tuesday afternoons, I uh, manned, was one of many, manning the senior meals hotline. And this was cool. primarily to enroll people in the senior meal program. Monday afternoon wasn't too bad. Um, some back-to-back -back calls, some time in between. So I thought, okay, you know, a Tuesday afternoon, I have to tell you, it was madness. It was nonstop calls. Uh, there were, at one point, there were 1,200 people in the queue. And it was a harrowing experience, but uh, it was a good experience. And I I do feel like I, you know, I was making a small contribution and, and uh, helping some people out. So it, it was a good experience, but it, it wasn't easy. Yeah, I've been kind of interested because we've had a few librarians who've done the disaster service working. And um, it's kind of interesting the range of things that they're doing. So you've got some people working at shelters, uh, you're working with food, things like that. Some people are just phone banking. So there's actually a lot of different ways people have, have ended up helping. How about you, Sung? Have you uh, been up to anything interesting? Well, can you tell us a little bit about what you do uh, normally and kind of what your role is with the library? And then maybe a little bit about what you've been doing since you've been working at home? Yeah, um, in normal circumstances, I digitize special collections materials. Um, also, I manage digital archival files. Um, 
And uh, sometimes patrons and staffs request reproduction of our special materials. So um, I do uh, make reproductions of them. Um, so that's my normal work. But uh, since telecommuting, uh, I've been cataloging photos from the Valley Times photo collection. Um, they're going to be available on tessa.lapl.org pretty soon and also been trying to learn um, new digitization techniques and trends in digital preservation so we can take care of our um, special collections materials and digital library better. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, I think you and I both, um, and you too, Kelly, to some extent, um, you know, our work already was very digitally focused. So for us, it was a little bit less of a weird transition. I know a lot of librarians that are used to working with the public um, are definitely trying to figure out ways that they can now do that digitally. And we are doing that through programs like this and social media and streaming story times and stuff like that. But obviously that's kind of a challenge for somebody who's normally used to somebody coming into the branch and, and uh, going to being stuck at home. Um, so anyway, I wanted to ask you guys, uh, this is the library. We like to talk about books sometimes. I was curious if either of you have been reading anything recently, if that you want to share with us, anything good? Um, I, I read a book. <laughs> it, it's an adult nonfiction. Uh, besides okay. my, uh, yeah, just regular adult nonfictions and fictions. I read a lot of children's books too, but um, this particular book has been very, uh, um, impactful to me. Um, it's called Minor Feelings by Kathy Park Home. Uh, it's about the author's um, experience as an Asian American um, in contemporary United States. So um, yeah, I highly recommend it if you can um, get a hold of the book, either ebooks or print books. And it looks like we may have lost Kelly briefly, so we'll see if she gets back on. Um, you know, today we wanted to talk a little bit about this project, which is the um, Safer at Home Archive Project, correct? Yes. Okay, it looks like we're having some, some slight glitchy problems. But Sun, can you hear me right now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So we're talking about the Safer at Home Archive Project. Um, since Kelly's not here, is it possible that you could kind of give us a, a brief overview of, of what that is? Sure. Um, so this is a collaboration between the History Department and also Digitization and Special Collections Department. We are hoping to uh, receive and collect uh, Andrew Lino's experiences during this COVID-19 pandemic. And um, I know that other institutions have started this type of project already, but uh, we are hoping that this will be a unique experience for um, Los Angeles residents. And uh, we are hoping to share this uh, nationally and internationally in a storytelling and archival slash preservation settings. So, yeah. Cool. And so the images that or I guess, files, any type of file, right? Or what are you accepting? I have to. Right. We're uh, accepting um, photographs, letters, emails, and other correspondence, journals, diary entries, post or social media post. Uh, if you see signs or notices on the street, we could even um, accept that. Um, uh, you can take a picture of it or you can actually uh, um, describe it on the website that we're going to be presenting later. Um, also your creative art such as paintings, drawings, um, poetry, we are interested in getting those as well. And do you, you said that some other institutions are doing this. Is, is anyone else doing that in Los Angeles that you know of? Um. I cannot really think of any uh, institutions in Los Angeles right now, but um, I know that Arizona State University has started something like this. Um, okay. Uh, I think Indiana University too. Yeah. Great. And it, it looks like we have Kelly back. Kelly, can can you hear us or? I can. I can. I'm <laughs> oh, wow. sorry. 
Yeah, I no worries. We're Sorry. all suffering. Um, uh, the internet is definitely overloaded with everyone working from home. So, um, Kelly, I, I know that you wanted to kind of talk a little bit about the background of the project. Do you want to get us up to yeah, speed? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy. Being, you know, part of this in introducing the Safer at Home project. Um, and I missed what you might have said before, but it's a collective effort to try to document these extraordinary times that you know we're living in. And our goal is to build a digital archive, digital collection uh, that will help future researchers, historians, and students understand what it was like living in Los Angeles during this pandemic and during this you know, incredible uh, time. What will turn out to be probably the defining moment of uh, this generation. And um, we're inviting Angelinos to contribute, as I heard Song say, contribute, you know, uh, diary, journal entries, photos, uh, creative works um, that will reflect their experiences and their reality. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, indexing is a big part of my job. And uh, since I've been indexing at home, I created a coronavirus file. Uh, and as I was indexing, it dawned on me that there was a lot of other stories that I somehow wanted to incorporate into you know, the file, but they weren't in the newspaper stories. Uh, you know, things I saw on Twitter or Instagram or hear from friends or even just from walking around the neighborhood. Like one example is when I was on a walk, I noticed there were these uh, blue and yellow uh, post-its on stop signs and lampposts. And if you went up and looked, they were handwritten jokes by this eight-year-old named Brian. And um, I just thought that was so great, you know, bring a smile to anybody that's walking by and other people joined in and they would post their jokes below it. And it's things like that, it's just one example of all sorts of things that are going on in neighborhoods and communities. Um, and I thought there must be some way I, you know, we could try and capture this. Um, and then I saw that there are some other institutions across the country that are creating these online archives trying to document this period. As uh, Sung mentioned, Arizona State, one of the first ones I saw was uh, the Michigan State Library, uh, Indiana University has one. There's just all sorts of different uh, institutions, and that's when I thought this is definitely something that LAPL uh, could and should be doing. And um, when I mentioned it to the digitization team, they just jumped on board and uh, it's been a great process trying to pull it together. Uh, and um, just want to mention quickly, <laughs> uh, the sort of the, we sort of talked about the purpose of it, but I want to talk about the importance of it. Um, you know, history is not just uh, government documents documents and statistics, um, the headlines in the newspapers, um, the chirons you see on cable TV. It's the uh, experiences of everyday, of everyday people. And it's these accounts and these perspectives that really bring history to life and you know fill in the details. And that's what we're trying to capture in Safer at Home. And as librarians, particularly as a history librarian, we know the value of uh, personal narratives and firsthand accounts. Uh, we're always asked in the department by researchers and students for uh, you know, primary sources, diaries, uh, personal narratives. And they offer uh, you know, unfiltered, uh, unvarnished accounts and perspectives. And they're just you know, invaluable. And, and lastly, I want to say that this pandemic has affected all of us. We're all eyewitnesses to it, um, to the fast changing landscape, and we all have a story to tell. And whether your story is about social distancing or you know, loss of a job or transitioning to telecommuting, homeschooling your child, um, changes in your neighborhood, loss of a favorite restaurant, these are all the kinds of things we want to include. And we want to also uh, hear from communities that aren't normally represented in institutional archives. And so we're going to try to really reach out to all, 
uh, communities and get a wide range of perspectives. And um, I'm just so happy to be part of this effort. And I can't wait to see what it becomes. And I just want to encourage everyone to participate. It's your chance to uh, help future generations understand this time period. Uh, and I want to thank the digitization and specialization team for their Herculean efforts in putting this together. They like took the idea and they're the ones that really built it and put it together. So I want to thank Sung, Rose, and Suzanne and, and people in the digital content team also. Uh, so anyway, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to what we get. And I so without further ado, I will let Sung uh, Talk about how you can make submissions and demonstrate the uh, process. Yeah, let's yeah. let's go ahead. Talk. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'll take it from now, and uh, Neil, if you could uh, share my screen, I have. There you go. All right, so this is the landing page for Safer at Home Archive. The website address right here is pretty easy to remember, lapl.org slash safer dash archive. Um, if you scroll down, you will see a brief description of our project. And like I said earlier, we'll be looking to receive photographs, letters, emails, responses, your diaries, journals, handwritten or online written. Um, if you are taking a social media posts, you can screen capture them using your phone or snipping tool on Windows operating system or screen capture tool on Mac. Um, yeah, and if you are doing uh, some paintings, artworks, we would be more than happy to receive them. You can simply take digital photos of them and share with us. Okay. And here is our email address, rarebook at lapl.org. Digitization and Special Collections Department also take care of rare books, and that is our email address as well. So if you ever get stuck uh, completing this form, please let us know by shooting us an email, and we'll try to help you step by step. Okay, so here we go. Uh, I'll be using an image that my colleague Suzanne has found on Wiki Commons, and it is for non-commercial reuse, so I can use this for educational purposes. And I have already downloaded to my computer, so it's saved on my computer. The first step is to attach the file. I'll be clicking on the Choose File button, and it is saved right here, Los Angeles Playground closed due to COVID-19. Click Open button, then it is attached. At this moment, Upload button gives you a little bit of an error sign, so please do not click Upload button until we fix that bug. Um, however, the way it is right now will help you um, submit at the end. All right, so now we are going to specify what kind of item I am contributing. I'm clicking photograph and you will see other formats as well. And the person who took this picture, the creator of this item is Jose Yardargo. And it could be an individual photographer, illustrator, organization, company, etc. If you do not know who created this item, then you can type unknown. The name associated with item. For this particular example, it's City of Los Angeles Parks and Recreation Center. You can also list people, businesses, and organizations that are appearing in the item. For example, if you have taken a picture of people and you know those people's names, then you can type down their names here. The location. If you know the exact address, cross streets, and neighborhood names, that'll be great. The specific, the better. The date. In this case, it's 2020 March 20. 
And please remember to put this in the format of year, month, and date. And if you do not know the exact date, it's OK. Just give us the month and the year or the year itself. If you do not know exactly when it was taken, then you can say circa for approximate dates. Uh, measurements. If you know the measurements of your paintings, your handwritten journals, you can type it down here in centimeters. For digital photos, sometimes it's difficult to know the exact dimension. So you can just leave it or you can type down non applicable, not applicable. All right. So the most important part is the description. For this example, I have written, this is a photograph of an empty playground at Gilbert Lindsay Le Recreation Park Center. The playground is closed due to COVID-19 lockdown with a sign that reads playground closed until further notice. There is a caution tape surrounding the swings and jungle gym. So I am basically trying to describe what is going on in the picture with typing it out what's on the notice. What else would you like to tell us about this item? If you like to add more to it, you can say this playground is located in the neighborhood I live in South Park. And your relationship to the item, how did you acquire this photo? Um, was it uh, was it you who experienced it and captured it, or was it handed down to you, shared with you? So I uh, wrote down, I took this photo using my Samsung Galaxy cell phone during my uh, neighborhood walks. All right, so that concludes the description part. And we are now at the informed consent and copyright permission form. So here again, you are agreeing with us that you'll be sharing your experiences um, with us. So it can be retold uh, in storytelling and archival preservation settings. If you'd like to know more about the license we'll be using, please go to creativecommons.org website for uh, details. Once you have read the fine uh, text, you can go ahead and click Agree. You can pull down your full name, your date of birth, your email or phone number, and voila, that's it. And you'll be clicking Submit. And it takes a little bit. And you will see this sign, thank you your submission has been received. And that concludes the submission process. And once this is submitted to us, our digitization and special collections department will uh, create them, um, include metadata, um, and convert them to the formats that are more appropriate for preservation. And we'll eventually make them available on tessa.lapl.org. You'll be able to see them in your future. Um, our digitization department digitized materials um, uh, by selecting them and also creating them. And we have them um, available on our website, tessa.lapl.org. And you will see many other digitized items on that website. Um, yeah, so that is a little bit of a uh, demonstration and explanation how you can go about submitting your materials, your experience during COVID-19 um, on our Safer at Home archive website. That's so cool. So the fields that people are filling out, can you, you know, those correspond to kind of standards for, for metadata that will then help us uh, kind of organize these uh, objects, right? And, and help people search for them. Those correspond to uh, fields that'll be in the digital archive. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, what those are, why those different details are important, the, the creator, the description, all that? Right, so we used a data management system called ContentDM, and it used a metadata schema called uh, Dublin Core. And the most important fields are the ones that I just described, such as title, description, dates, creators, and people who are associated with the items. 
So that's why we include those fields um, in the form. And it will help the patrons who are who will be searching items on tessa.lapl.org um, to retrieve the images faster and more effectively. Well, I thought I just brought up my screen. We could take a quick look at um, Tessa if folks aren't familiar with it. Do you guys want to go ahead and take a look at that? So this is our um, digital collections website. It's a subsite of uh, LAPL.org, and the address is uh, down at the bottom there, tessa.lapl.org. I'll put it in the chat, too. And uh, basically what this is is just all of the collections that have been not all of our collections, it's collections that have been digitized and added to that system that Sung was talking about, ContentDM, which is a, a, you know, a digital asset management system. And uh, what we have on the site, if you go to tessa.lapl.org, we've got um, a few different things. We've got kind of a features section up here. So this features um, both um, blog posts, uh, we call them stories on Tessa. There's also um, sort of digital uh, exhibits where we've curated a selection of items kind of on a theme. And then if you scroll down, you'll see uh, here's the exhibits and stories, but the collections are here. And if you click view more, that'll take you to all of the collections. Scroll down. This shows you all of the kind of discrete collections um, in our uh, digital collections at the moment. There are things that have been digitized that aren't, aren't on here yet. And there are many more collections in our sort of physical holdings that, that have not been digitized. Obviously, it takes a lot of time uh, to both scan and digitize those things, but also, uh, as um, you guys were talking about, to, to describe them and make sure that there's the correct metadata and description information to add them to a collection like this. So that all takes time. But um, just really quickly, these are some of the collections we've got. Obviously, we've got our photo collection, which is very famous. And if you click on photo collection, it'll take you to the um, sort of sub collections of the photo collection. So these are all kind of discrete collections in themselves. And the cool thing about our photo collection is that many of these are actually owned by the library. So um, mm -hmm. I, you guys could maybe, I don't remember the exact details of which, but but many of the collections in archives are not often you might physically have the photographs in your possession as an institution, but you don't necessarily actually own the copyright. Uh, but with many of the photos right. in the photo collection, we do actually own the rights to these photos so we can control reproduction. Um, and we do license these photos out for use in um, everything from movies to you know artworks, things like that. So that's kind of a distinct thing. And if you ever want to um, order a photo or get information about how you would get one of these to reproduce it, you'd click on this ordering and use um, site here. And let me just take you, you can browse the collection. Let's click on a specific collection. This is the Herald Examiner photo collection. If you click browse, there's also a search field up here, but let's just browse so we can take a look at what this looks like on the back end here uh, once you go into content DM. So this is kind of the, it looks a little different, but this is just kind of the search and browsing interface of content DM. You've got some different abilities to sort of narrow down your search. We're obviously browsing everything that's in the Herald Examiner collection right now. Um, but this just lets you kind of dig into our collection. And you can see there's just thousands of items here focused on Los Angeles. Um, it's just a really fun collection to just browse. And if you've got a specific need, if you're working on um, you know, a research project or a movie or something where you need images, this is a great place to start. Um, and then some other things that are in the collection that are pretty cool are some of these sort of printed objects. Uh, one that I think is really cool because it's actually in the public domain. I'm, is that correct, Sung, the fashion plates? Yeah, so these, uh, be because of the age, um, not all of our items are you know, free for just use because they are copyrighted, uh, but the fashion plates are, because they're so old, actually are in the public domain. And so we've provided full resolution um, copies of these. So if you go to these fashion plates, and these are from uh, fashion magazines from kind of the late 18th century uh, into the 19th century, right? Mm -hmm. Mostly. Yes. Yeah, so this is from 1826. Um, but what's cool is that, you know, this is a an object that you can actually download the full resolution. And if you zoom in, this is a very large uh, 4,000 pixel wide file. So these are kind of fun if you're an artist or somebody that's, you know, just use, looking for something, an image to reuse for something or, or modify. Uh, these are totally fair game to download and, and manipulate and uh, build on. And you can get the high resolution image right here. So um, that's something that I think is kind of cool. Sung, do you have anything in uh, Tessa that's like a, a favorite collection or, or something that's interesting? Sorry um, to put you on the spot. Uh, I love 
<laughs> no, no, no. Um, but um, kind of build upon the photo collections, our department has been um, processing and adding metadata to Valley Times photo collection. Mm -hmm. So there are about 45,000 items so far, and we are very close to finishing that project. So um, hopefully sometime in June, um, all of them will be available on tessa.lapl.org. And um, I just want to give a shout out to my team, um, our department, um, catalogers, and everybody who was involved in um, finishing um, the project soon and have them available for the patrons. Yeah, that's excellent. So the Valley Times collection, correct me if I'm wrong, the Valley Times was a newspaper that uh, closed and then donated its collection or was it was there another step in that process? Mm -hmm. We should really have Christina on here because she runs the photo collection and, and knows exactly, yeah. could talk a little bit more about this. But the Valley Times is just a really great cross section right. of Los Angeles from um, kind of the 50s and 60s mostly, is that? correct? Oh, that's true. Mm -hmm. But just a amazing a of, kind of, uh, just kind of slice of life. Uh, so here's a Valley Times newspaper boy. These are, we use these a ton too for our blog posts and, and images on our website because um, there's usually, you know, something to do with what we're writing about or, uh, and some, some really weird stuff too. Kelly, do you have any favorites from Tessa? Yeah, a lot of uh, Dodgers pictures, uh, sports pictures are included. Um, um, pictures of famous people, but as well as uh, everyday lives, um, uh, regular people like us. So yeah, it is a very interesting collection. Yeah, yeah obviously. Even new, so, go ahead, Kelly. I was just going to say, for all of us who are missing baseball, that's great. <laughs> yeah, obviously, sports are a big part of a newspaper. Kelly, did you have anything that, that uh, any of the other collections in Tessa that stand out for you? Or? Yeah, I have to highlight the California Index. That's what I do my indexing for. Okay, so down here you go to California Index under Collections. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look mm -hmm. at it. I like to call it the go-to uh, your go-to source for local history, and. Um, if you want to uh, put in, just for an example, put in the box, put in um, Mount Low, M-T period L-O-W-E. Yeah. Yep. And then, all right, and then scroll down. And I think it's record number six. There we go. If you see the blue link to the right, that means okay. that that item has been digitized and you can view it. And oh, then there's cool. some very, yeah, and if you scroll down on this, you'll see there's a little trail map and little trails. And so there's a lot of little stuff like that that uh, you can access even from, even now, you know, from home. A lot of it is is citations that you could pull up on the Los Angeles Times database, but we do have a lot of this cool stuff digitized that's fun to look at. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is cool. Um, if you don't know about it, Mount Low, the Mount Ro Low Railroad was kind of this failed development project. Can you tell us more about it, Kelly? You probably know a lot. Yeah, uh, and they, they built this uh, railway and, and tavern and hotel on the St. Gabriel Mountains. And that, that train was an e-ticket ride, let me tell you. It was like, you know, hairpin curves. But it was a big tourist attraction. Um, and... Uh, uh, it's, it's kind of too bad. There's a, some remnants of it. If you do some hiking up in the San Gabriel Mountain, you can come across some um, remnants of it. But uh, it was quite uh, uh, the attraction in the day. Yeah. I've yeah. hiked up there at, at the Echo Mountain um, kind of lookout. There's ru ruins of the railroad and mm -hmm. the hotel and stuff like that. So. Yeah. yeah. What what is the California index exactly? Can you give us kind of a? Uh, yeah, the California index is a, a, a collection of um, citations to uh, magazines, journals. Uh, some of the things are indexed are. 
currently are the Los Angeles Times, but we also do neighborhood newspapers such as the Argonaut, um, uh, the Larchmont uh, Chronicle, uh, because again, that's a perspective that you, uh, little stories and perspectives that you don't get in the Los Angeles Times. And um, we also have, uh, sometimes it's a citation or articles, but we also have old fashioned clipping files, as you saw where I had my clippings that you can come in and then um, it's easy to um, access those stories all, all in one place. Uh, librarians have been doing this for decades. Uh, there's some uh, you know, old history of the bar and bench that has uh, lawyers and judges uh, from the 19th century, early 20th century, and also early um, African American uh, cumulative uh, histories. And they've also indexed like uh, Southwest Contractor and Builder, which just is a wealth of information for old buildings. And we'll oftentimes have the architect, uh, time of completion, contractors, et cetera. So there's all kinds of information in there. Um, buildings, some of its strengths are buildings, architecture, ethnic groups in Los Angeles, uh, neighborhoods. Uh, as we, when I was on Ask a Librarian earlier, there's a lot of material that helps you research the history of your house. Um, we also have handwritten uh, biography forms that were sent out to uh, notables back in the day, and they would handwrite their biography on the form. Uh, and those are just a, a gold mine uh, of information. And um, we refer to it all the time. It's really great. Anytime you have a little, you'd be surprised the questions we can answer with it. Uh, and. Uh, so we encourage people to look at it. I'm trying to promote its use. So if you have any yeah. questions, yeah. always email Kelly, what's a good way to uh, ask a question about the California Index? Should they contact you or the History Department? Yeah, they can just email the History Department, uh, history at lapl.org, or there is a Ask a Librarian on the website. But uh, you can ask the questions, and, and they will be uh, forwarded. Uh, to my attention. So that's amazing. Um, if you're just joining us, we are talking to uh, Kelly Wallace and some of them, two librarians who worked on the Safer at Home archive. This is a project where we are collecting uh, all types of materials from um, people in Los Angeles about anything having to do with the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the subsequent Safer at Home order. So this is a form you can go to. Um, let me put the URL up again. It's lapl.org slash safer dash archive. And this is a page where you can upload a file. Uh, it'll tell you all the information about what you need to submit it. But basically, you're filling out a few fields, uh, some information about it, and then um, contributing to this archive, which will then be curated by our librarians and put online on tessa.lapl.org, which is our uh, digital collection site, um, subsite of our website. It's tessa.lapl.org, so look for that in the future. Uh, and in the meantime, yeah, if you have photos or any of these other types of materials, letters, emails, uh, journal and diary entries, blog posts, notices, signs, creative art, anything to do with the pandemic um, and the response and, and your life in this situation, uh, your neighbors, et cetera, feel free to contribute to this. Uh, I think it's a really cool project and it'll build a, a really interesting archive. And I, I wanna thank you guys for coming on today. I don't, we don't have a lot of questions. If anyone's got any questions, uh, feel free to enter them in the chat. Otherwise, I guess we could wind down a little early. Um, but I do wanna encourage folks to really participate in this because it's just such a cool project. And hopefully, you know, the more submissions we get, the more of a rich collection will be built. Um, and yeah, I'm not I'm not seeing a lot of activity in the chat. So, you know, unless you guys have some other things that you wanted to add, anything from you all? Um, just, uh, just today, uh, earlier, <laughs> we received an email from a patron asking whether we'll be accepting um, movie files. Um, hmm. And right now we 
don't have the function to receive right now. However, um, in near future, we are hoping to add those um, formats such as movie or audio so we can build upon uh, this project. But just to be clear right now, um, we're going to stick to um, JPEGs, TIFFs, and PDFs, Excel files um, for now. Okay, yeah, and it says right here all the file types that you, oh, let me bring it up. Um, it'll tell you exactly what you can upload. And they do have to be smaller than 25 megabytes, um, but that should be no problem for this. these file types unless you have a really big image. Um, and then rarebooks at lapl.org, that's the best way to uh, to ask any questions, Sung. Right. Let me put that up. So rare books, and that's um, right. That's the best uh, way to contact us. And if you have yeah. more uh, files, more than um, twenty-five megabytes, um, and there are multiple files, then you can just resubmit different files. Okay, it's it's rare book that we're <laughs> correct. No s at the end, the email address. Rare book at lapl dot org. Um, so. Um, okay. Yes, no? OK. Well, we'll figure that out. It's That's the email that's on the page right now. So um, anyway, so lapl.org slash safer archive. I'll put the URL up one more time. Um, thank you so much, guys, for coming out. Uh, thank you, anyone who tuned in today. I am so happy that we seem to have had minimal audio issues um, and that everyone was was seen and heard that showed up today, which we we haven't always had the pleasure of before. So um, and, and thanks for being back on this. Uh, show, stream, whatever, Kelly. Um, Kelly did an awesome presentation once before. So thank you. And Sung, thank you so much. I want you guys to stay safe. Um, and I'll say goodbye to y'all. I do want to just really quickly um, share a few things for our viewers. Uh, I want to give a quick plug for some things on our website. So I'll bring that up. Our website, lapl.org, is has been reborn as a hub for um, sort of digital content, things that you can access from home. Uh, we've kind of de-emphasized some of the things that you had to be in the branch to do. So if you go to lapl.org, you'll see this slightly different layout. Um, if you do not have a library card and you're trying to access digital materials, you can sign up for an e-card. I would click e-card registration here, and that'll take you to a uh, form and one thing I do want to point about, out about the e-card is that you do not need an e-card if you already have a library card. And if you have a library card that you've forgotten the number for, you've forgotten your PIN, you have um, you know, no idea, you just want to check if you do have a library card, go to our Ask a Librarian page. That's down here at the bottom. Click Ask a Librarian. And that'll take you to a link where you can email our InfoNow department. And they are wizards at you know, figuring out diagnosing issues with your account. Um, so just click the email link. Unfortunately, they're not doing phone calls or text right now. But you can email them, and they will get back to you. So if you have any issues with your account, you have reference questions, questions for a librarian, feel free to email them. And that's uh, lapl.org slash ask a librarian. Um, and that's pretty much it from, from us today. Uh, wrapping up a little bit early, but that's probably just an extra 15 minutes of uh, audio problems and glitches that we skipped. So that saved us a little bit of time. And um, I'll say goodbye. So thanks so much. And uh, stay safe, everyone. <laughs>